Welcome to the Valhalla Filmcast, a show where normal guys talk about the films that they love. And here are your hosts, Bryce Thompson, Brian Hammond, and Cody Ryrie. Now get ready, because the show starts in 3, 2, 1. Welcome to the Valhalla Filmcast. I am Bryce Thompson, and I am here with Cody Ryrie. And Brian Hammond. <laughs> kind of forgot what I was saying there. <laughs> Just at least you, you remembered Bryce our names. Goofy That's tonight. good. <laughs> Sorry, the sh- the Shining man, it's got me. Like, it's got me. <laughs> we were My okay. Brain. For those of you who are confused, we were discussing the Shining right before we started recording, and and Bryce is still back there. We Somehow in between out. there, though. we so geeked good. out over the Shining. We oh. we went on a fifteen minute uh, just oogling over the shining so we should have recorded it it's it's so amazing it's so oh, i'm drooling as we're speaking right now over the shining that's a great segue to the show so segue me let's go okay uh segue talk about movies go that was that was or, elegant or... that was uh that was so good I... no all right horror films we're doing the best films of 2016 this is part two we're going to start with horror films. Um, I had two I wanted to mention. I'm sure Brian will have more because this is his bread and butter. Um, my two I wanted to mention. My runner-up is uh, Ouija, Origin of Evil. And it's about seven-eighths of a really, really good movie. And uh, had problems with the very end, I think, because it got too close to the original stinker. And it rubbed off. But the rest of the movie is just so well made and so well acted. And it has depth. And Elliot from E.T. plays a priest. What else do you want? So, uh, And it takes place in the 60s. And it has yeah, all this cool period. filmmaking stuff. And I could go on. Well worth your time, even with an ending that doesn't quite work. Um, the other one that I really liked this year was The Conjuring 2. Fantastic uh, follow-up to the first Conjuring. Maybe not quite as good as the first one. Maybe a little bit long, in my opinion. But those are nitpicks because, um, again, acting and the building, the craft behind a scare and the way that things are filmed, so artful in James Wan's movies. And he shows no sign of letting up. Conjuring 2 is another one I put right up next to all the rest of his that I love so much. Those are the two I thought of. Brian? Um... Uh, <laughs> so those two, yeah. Uh, Lights Out is another one. We talked mm-hmm. about that a little bit, didn't we? A little bit, yeah. Um, and uh, The Boy, which you uh, tease me <clears throat> relentlessly about, Cody, which <laughs> is not a horrible movie. Um, but I'm really surprised you left this one off. The Witch. Cody, you're the one that told me to watch it. That's true. That's true. I. That's That's like one of the best horror films in the past decade one of the well, and, and people have been putting it on their lists left and right and i watched it again i watched it once and then i watched it again and i, I was in a bad mood or maybe i had some weird ravioli oh or something that day i don't know like and it wasn't <laughs> bad it just for some reason didn't click with me as much the second time so i'm gonna i'm gonna defer to your better opinion and other people smarter than me and that yeah it's probably one of the most original best horror films of the decade not just the year and I'm glad I own it because I want to revisit it again. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, so, but my, my top... apologies. My apologies on that one. <laughs> that's that's a close second for me. Uh, the witch probably, and then the conjuring, and then don't breathe before the conjuring possibly, and then Ouija, and then uh, lights out. But my number one horror film and probably uh, my number one film of the year, and I hesitate. Because that's too much of a spoiler, calling it a horror film. Because I went into this completely blind, and I think it really lends itself to know absolutely nothing about this other than if you are not very much desensitized, <laughs> that this will traumatize you. And uh, um, it's The Neon Demon, uh, which is a film by Nicholas Winding Riffin. And so if you've never seen uh, one of his films, um, stay away from it. And if you're not into this, this, this touches all the taboos that are out there pretty much. And so, you know, I would totally stay away from this unless you're the most ardent horror fan and have 
spent years and years of desensitizing your mind and soul <laughs> to wow. prepare you to prepare you for this film and it is the the most uh s- the best cinematic experience i had this year for sure even though i didn't see it in the cinema so there you go wow that's my number so, one horror film number one <laughs> horror film and brian gives us his number one period early on there that was uh yeah sorry to, unexpected to spoil that but that's with much trepidation. If anyone knows me personally, do not watch this because I don't know anyone. I don't know anyone that I would recommend it to seriously. Wow! Except for uh, you know, probably my my film buddy, and that's about it. So, did your yeah. Did your wife watch it with you or no? She did watch it. Yeah. What did uh, she we've think? We had much discussion about it. Well, I've <laughs> I've spent the past fifteen years desensitizing her too, so you know it's it's okay. Uh, Seventeen years. To se- I wasn't you know saying that uh, um, we've been married fifteen years. We've been married seventeen years. So, but you you didn't desensitize her the first two years. Yeah, you the like, first two years did. I was a good boy, so. and then it went downhill from there. <laughs> Wow, this has gotten oddly personal. All right, well, I know. Um, I'm sorry. In fact, uh, I don't even know why I mentioned this. We should have just edited it out, man. Do not no, watch no. this. Anyone I know, do not watch it. You'll be scarred for life. Uh, Bryce, did you want to bring anything up horror wise that hasn't been brought up? Okay, it's been pretty. I say it's been pretty good. Um, I wanted to do weirdest slash most thought provoking movies. Um, I say that because I don't want it to sound totally negative. Because when you say weird movie, you're like, oh, that thing's stupid. You got to watch it, you know. And I, it, these movies that I got are not stupid. They're uh, they're just very weird. Um, the two that I've got on this one, one of them is called The Lobster, and uh, mm. that's with uh, Colin Farrell. And it's in the future, I guess. It doesn't really say, but it, they live in a world where being single is legal. Uh, you you cannot be single. So if you have an event where you have a breakup or you get widowed, then you go to this hotel. And in the hotel, you have a certain number of days to pair up. And if you don't make it, they turn you into an animal, and they let you loose. And there's also uh, a group of people who get scared and run away, and they they refuse society's laws, and they live in the woods as single people. And uh, those people, you're not allowed to be in a couple if you're with those people. And so it's, it's... for me, I'm going to reveal something personal here, but for me, as a quasi-libertarian, um, it spoke to me on a number of levels about how society is always trying to put their values on you, whether single, married, whatever. People feel like they have to mandate what you're going to believe in, and it just leads to, to misery. And also the fact that we have our own kind of ideas about what we're supposed to be, and those can be very destructive. So I'm, I'm making it sound all artsy-fartsy, and it kind of is, but it's also freaking hysterically funny like there are so many and a lot of like really dark funny moments too there's a thing with a dog i won't ruin it but i laughed out loud and then i felt bad about it for like 10 minutes after (laughs) so it's 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 really worth watching i i I definitely recommend it and brian you're the one that turned or one of you two talked about the trailer for this i think it was brian Brian. Yeah. yeah Yeah, at the very beginning of the year. It looked right up my alley. I haven't had the opportunity, unfortunately. So. Say it's on Redbox again. I should have yeah, stock in Redbox. <laughs> I've heard this movie is really good. I've heard really good things about it. Is there Oscar buzz about this one, Cody? I think so. It may have gone under the radar because it happened. It came out so long ago. But yeah. uh, I wouldn't be surprised. I, I haven't seen Colin Farrell do much in a long time, and he really comes roaring back. He... Uh, the whole thing has kind of a different air to it. I don't know how exactly how to describe it, but uh, I, I I loved it. It was it stayed with me for days after I saw it, and uh, gave me lots to think about. It was also very very funny. I guess I don't want it to sound too stuffy. It was very funny. Um, the other one that's even weirder, actually, it's weirder by like a factor of four than the lobster is uh, Swiss Army Man, and <laughs> yes. I, I I don't I don't. Hmm. I saw it like three <laughs> weeks ago, and I still am kind of like <laughs> when I talk about it because I don't, I don't know how to talk about it. Like it's the one that if you've seen the preview where Harry Potter Daniel Radcliffe plays a farting corpse the entire movie, and uh, uh, the guy from Drinking there Your Milkshake blood. Paul Dano there plays um, 
uh, a guy who's going to hang himself on an island. This is in the first two minutes. I'm not ruining anything. And Daniel Radcliffe's body washes up, and he rides his gas off the island, and they have all these adventures. And so it's, <laughs> it's his, oh, like that's in the first boy. that's in the first five or six minutes. So like I said I'm not spoiling anything, but the gas wow. is so powerful coming out of this corpse that he's able to to lower its pants and ride it like a jet ski. Uh, I must other... I must watch this movie. <laughs> <laughs> me too. And oh, that are you kidding me? may be the most normal thing that happens in the whole movie. So <laughs> it just gets weirder from there. It's. But it's not bad. It might be, it's not a bad movie. There, it's just there might be a Swiss Army Man show. <laughs> <laughs> if y'all see it, I'm more than willing to talk about it. I could talk about it for hours because there's a lot to talk about in this movie, uh, and I don't know how I feel about it. Still, I I enjoyed it. I mean, it was yeah, funny. I yeah. laughed out loud several times throughout the movie. <laughs> but it's it's one of two movies this year. I haven't talked about the other one yet. That had a lot of farting jokes in it that really worked for me. I, I liked them. <laughs> so, <laughs> what was the other one? You mentioned it already. We haven't gotten into it yet. We haven't oh, gotten okay, to it yet. Okay. So uh, yeah, I, great performances. Very original. Super weird. I want people to watch it just so I can talk to them about it. So yeah, um, those are my weird movies. Uh, anything else y'all want to put in that category? Uh, the Neon Demon. <laughs> yeah, as I say, that would probably. <laughs> okay, moving on. Um, let's go on to animated movies. This is a great year for animated movies. Um, mm-hmm. A lot of stuff came out. One I did not like as much was The Secret Life of Pets. Just kind of fell flat for me. Of course, That's what I've heard. That's yeah. what I've heard a lot about that movie. I was really excited for it. And I didn't see it. Had a good because, trailer. Had a good trailer. Yeah. But. I heard it was just kind of just don't. I mean, it wasn't terrible, but it just didn't really go anywhere and kind of random. I, yeah. and I fell asleep in it. I'll be 100% yeah. honest. Yeah. I kept dozing yeah. off. So, See, I saw it at our huh. second run theater here with my little girl. Because we had nothing to do that afternoon. It was literally the only thing playing. And I kept getting... She was grateful. I was grateful. She was like, can we have more popcorn? And I was like, yep. And so I would get up and go get more popcorn because <laughs> there's nothing going on in the theater. So yeah, yeah. So that was my my least favorite animated movie. It's just uphill from there. A lot of great stuff. Um, one that's a little less seen that I want to bring some attention to. It's on Netflix. Is one called The Little Prince. Uh, a really heard interesting. You've heard of that? Yeah. Yeah. Um, based on it's the based French on book. The, on the French book. Yes, exactly. And some of the most beautiful animation. And they do this really cool thing where. The whole movie's framed in reality, quote unquote, and reality is modern computer animation. And then when they go back into the story, it becomes kind of this paper mache stop motion animation. And then they have another one that they when they they go to like a flash forward, it becomes a different kind of animation. It's really interesting because they use those forms of animation to tell the story, and it's just gorgeous, interesting. It's a little weird, it's a little out there, which is I guess why it wasn't as much seen, but. I, I definitely recommend it, and it's on Netflix. So come on, you know, yeah. what do you want? Jeff Bridges does a voice in it, which is always interesting to see him do stuff. Um, the big one this year, <coughs> excuse me, one of the big ones this year was uh, Finding Dory. Yeah, which I would yeah. say, I would say this is my favorite of the year. Um, I thought it was really good. I have like one issue with it, and. I beat it to death, and so, I mean, that's about it. I Having really seen like the it. film, I get what you're talking about, though. It's Are like, you kidding? hey, they're being like, mean to a special needs guy, you know? Like, right? Like, how does anyone like the like the whole theater is like laughing about this at this? And I'm it, just like, it was kind of like, it was kind of funny though. Like, it is but, funny. It is funny. But I'm also kind of like, I feel horrible for laughing right hey, now. Hey, though, they get hit in the <laughs> face with a giant fish at the end, though, if you notice that. It's true. Okay. So. And that may, I don't know. That's like, okay, we make everything better because we hit them in the face <laughs> with the fish. <laughs> <laughs> no. Just don't do it at all. I don't know. That's my only issue. I'm and, surprised Disney let that through. Uh, they have it a lot. Like, I looked because I was just googling and like there's like complaints about that like in like a ton of their movies really? interesting and i guess i just never noticed it but well i wanted to say standouts from finding dory which i've seen probably 15 times now because my little girl got so into wow. 
Finding Dory. Nice. Um, nice. It could be worse. Could be worse. Uh, the I love the the whale that does the echolocation. Yeah, uh, <laughs> it's so awesome. funny. And the, the the octopus is kind of a marvel of animation. Really. Do you like Do you like the octopus? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did. I didn't like him. No, I didn't like Hank. No, he kind of got on my nerves, bugged me a little. Fair enough. But happens. But no, it was uh, yeah. it was good Pixar. It was. I mean, it, I I've never he been, I wasn't a huge fan of Finding Nemo, as well. I mean, it's good, but it's not my favorite. So it didn't seem sacrilegious oh. to do a sequel. I was like, sure, hey, whatever, you know. So yeah, Finding Dory, yeah. Uh, Zootopia was also a fantastic. Ooh, I movie. forgot about. I switched. I'm totally switching to Zootopia. I think Zootopia. <laughs> yeah, Zoot. I totally spaced on Zootopia. That is definitely my favorite. It's just. It really good. Well, that totally one's uh, flopped, but... that one's streaming on Netflix now too, thanks to the new deal yes. between Disney and Netflix. Yeah, um, I love that one for That's all the social. That's got a lot of social commentary in it, like different animals, different yeah. things. I, and I it was like good. That. It was good. Like I... when, like <laughs> when they talk when they're at the wolf place and they're like, "No, you're going to start a howl off." <laughs> and then they like... <laughs> uh, I love when funny. they go to the DMV and it's entirely you know uh, everybody who works there is a sloth, sloth. yeah and takes forever hilarious classic um, anyway stuff. but Good that stuff. leads me to my favorite animated movie of the year and for a while my favorite movie period but then it got upstaged um, by a couple other movies anyway Kubo and the Two Strings from the Laika people um, I, yeah, go ahead. What? I almost rented that. Oh, do because it because of what you've said about it. But do I it. just, I, I don't know. I couldn't. I couldn't <laughs> spend my dollar fifty. It's a purchase for me. Don't rent it. Just, just did buy you, it. Did you find? Did you see it, Brian? I did. Oh man, right. incredible. It's that good. Yeah, it's good. Hmm. I heard one guy say, maybe this will help you. I don't know if you're a Zelda person or not. I'm not a big video game eh. person. They said yeah. it was like the Zelda movie that they never got. That it was the perfect wow. like fantasy version of that so what were some of the standouts for you brian i already talked about it in a previous well, show so i feel like i'm repeating myself so go ahead well i rented it from Redbox. i haven't bought it yet uh-huh. um but so they had this little there were no bonus features uh special features but oh, they had man, this little when you buy I it know. there's a there's a, one of the best commentaries of the year it's amazing i know Sorry, I, go I, ahead. I, I gotta go buy ahead. it but anyways <laughs> they had this little preview of Leica, kind of uh showing the behind the scenes like a little advertisement and and so it it gave me like a, a I watched it with different lens and I was just floored by the animation, um, the detail, the attention to detail that every single character gets, the movement of hair. I mean, it they took stop motion to a, a new level. And I know there are some critics that say that it's a hybrid, which it is. It's a hybrid, but because um, they used some green sc- green screen effects, you know, for like backgrounds and stuff, but. Um, you cannot duplicate that or replicate that. I've I haven't seen it that good ever. It's just yeah. incredible, and and plus the story's great. I love uh you know Japanese culture, and so I really dug that. And I don't know, it was just a a good good story. Um, yeah, everything was good about it. I loved it. There I watched was, it twice. Um, there was a couple well, of emotional it. gut punches in the movie too. There's a. Uh... A moment when you find out what the title means, and I, I cried. Yeah. I cried. <laughs> yeah, for the for the three quarters of the movie, I was like, "Why did they call it this?" Like, I totally was like, "Like, dude, this this is dumb. Why did they name it this?" But then, yeah, oh, it comes around, and yeah, really powerful. And then there's another moment when a character is, um, uh, he doesn't have a backstory. I guess that's the non-spoiler way of saying it. And people give him a backstory. And I cried during that too. It was, uh, I did. Wow. My my favorite part, um, well, I don't know if it's my favorite part, but I really loved, and I'll do this spoiler free ish, um, well, spoiler free, um, is how he used his his own talent and skills. Mm -hmm. And that's all I'll say. You know what I'm talking about, Cody. So good. (laughs) Yeah. It's such a good message. And yeah, go go buy it. (laughs) <laughs> I think I'm convinced. I mean, when I remember seeing the previews for it, I I looked at my wife and I was like, "No, stupid." <laughs> and she's like, "Yes, we'll never see that movie." But 
since I, you guys have, it sounds like it's a watch just to see, you know? Yeah, just like visually speaking. Now, oh, you know? Man. I just, I love the fact that also this is a world where people get hurt, where people die yeah. and they stay dead. Like, this is not like, you know, I mean, there's a character that gets a head injury and then has to be, like, taken care of after that for, I mean, when does that happen? In an animated movie, no you know, like it's yeah, really it's it has some very dark and deep and real points. Just like you said, Cody, when you first told me about it, I mean, there's some dark elements to this mm. uh, film, and yeah, they just hit a home run with it. Yeah, it's mm. it's it's one that I think will is going to age really well too. I imagine yeah. I can watch that, you know, years down the line, and it's going to be sure. really good. Okay, uh, anybody else have an animated film they want to bring up this year? That was my number one. Yeah, I think we mentioned them all. Okay, well that brings me to, and I've got three of these. If y'all can think of other ones, they're um, live action family films, and I loved all three of these films. One of them more than the others, but they're all really good, um, and they're all from Disney. So what do you know? Uh, number one is the Jungle Book. That was uh, the live action version of that. That um, I loved it. I, I had no interest in it, and then I saw it, and it was great. It was funny, and it was, again, amazing to look at. And uh, Bill Murray plays Baloo the Bear. I mean, what do you want? That's And he sings Bear Necessities. Bill Murray sings that song. And yeah, that's um, pretty cool. uh, the guy who plays King Louie. Oh, gosh, my brain. Uh, he's in Pulp Fiction. He gives the whole speech about, this is your watch, little man. What's that guy's name? Oh, Christopher oh. Walken. Christopher yeah. Walken. <laughs> Christopher Walken plays King Louie and he sings I Want to Be Like You worth the price of admission alone is seeing is hearing Christopher Walken sing I Want to Be Like You uh, and just a really good story and great voice work and it, uh, watch it it's on it's it's on Netflix what's wrong with you go sorry alright now um, other another one that I really, really liked uh, is Pete's Dragon which uh, I have not seen the original Pete's Dragon. I, I talked to a guy who hated the new one because he was a huge fan of the old one, and they did not keep anything apparently. But the new one really plays like uh, the spiritual sequel of like the Goonies and Super Eight kind of like that kind of yeah. '80s, nice uh, you know, kid adventure film. Robert Redford's in it, and he's great. Um, it takes place in the '80s, which helps it feel. Well, that's that right up my alley then. So, just a fantastic, uh, really good. My my wife watched it with me. Everybody really liked it. My my little girl watched it, um, and she's only four, and she sat through the whole thing and really liked it. So, yeah, uh, I really recommend that one as well. And that brings me to my favorite of these films, and somewhere in my top three of movies of the year, it's the BFG, which is uh, Spielberg's new movie this year that he made um, based off the Roald Roald, Roald Roald Dahl book however you say it and uh, it's a movie that I saw once and I was like yeah it's alright it's good you know I liked it and then I saw it again and I was like wow yeah, there's a lot in that and then I saw it again and I was like wow I love this movie more than like my life itself so it converted me as it went along it's so well made it's just charming the whole thing's just charming and this is the other one that has the fart jokes that work really well. There's a whole oh, scene really? built around built around fart jokes. The entire scene. I remember we were in the theater watching it, and it happened. And this guy in front of me was like, "Wow, that's highbrow." He was all like offended. <laughs> but um, <laughs> that's uh, uh, that's the book, though. That's the book. Yeah, that's I what mean, I was gonna say. I was gonna ask the, if anybody had read the book and if that was true to the book or not. So the book is very good. I really love that book and. I I kind of forgot about it, but yeah, I really need to see that movie. Is it a kid's I, book or is it like a chapter great. book or what is it? Uh, it's a chapter book. That's it's kind of like a kid's book. Once they're like getting into like chapter books, is that the that one with sense. the monster in the flower pot on his head or something? Am I making mm, that up? I don't know. Not in the movie. Okay. I, but... He makes like I love that author. He I've read like all his books. And they're all fantastic. And I read them when I was in like fourth grade. So however old you are when you're in fourth grade. Hmm. Yeah. But, um, well, okay. But I think anybody of any age can like this movie. And I think we yeah, take definitely. Spielberg for granted. I mean, I did. I barely saw this in the theater. It was in the cheap theater. We kind of caught it. I wasn't excited for it. And then I was like, oh, yeah, he's a master. He's <laughs> one of the best person to ever pick a camera up. 
and the things yeah. he does with making it look so easy. You know, he's going to die one day, and you're going to be sorry you didn't see his movies. And I heard people left and right be like, yeah, Spielberg makes some crap every now and then. And then he makes things that are okay, like the BFG. Well, screw you, person, who thought BFG was just okay, because it's amazing. And you should watch it again. If you could see me right now, I'm pointing my finger a lot. There's a lot of finger pointing going you are. on in this little thing here. You look angry. I, f- <laughs> I feel very strongly that this movie... And I also, it kind of fooled me, too. I didn't catch it at first, and I'm kind of mad at myself for not realizing how absolutely good it was. And I started to realize it even more when we were at Christmas with my wife's family, a lot of extended family that I'm not too familiar with them. And it was given, it was being given as a present several times. And uh, when it'd get open, the little kids would freak out. Oh, we love this movie. And the parents were like, oh, yeah, we like that one, too. And so you watch. Mind my prophecy here. It's going to catch on. It'll be one that kind of catches on with people. As the years go yeah. by, so I can see that. I'm done ranting. Spielberg's a national treasure, and yeah, I'm done. Um, okay, <coughs> the only else other, other yeah, well, the ahead. only other, the only live action one I saw, which technically I think this is um, Alice Through the Looking Glass. Would yeah, that, be? That, that counts. Sure. Yeah, yeah, there was a cartoon of it, right? So I saw that one, and eh, you know. I, I'm burnt out. I'm burnt out on Burton. Well, it wasn't Tim Burton though. The sequel. He didn't well, do the I'm sequel. burnt out on his Burton esque stuff. Ah, uh, gotcha. gotcha. Which should firmly. I, okay, I'm burnt out on Depp. How's that? That's that's, that's probably fair. more true. That's probably that's more fair. true. I'm burnt out on Depp in his wacky stuff. He has a movie coming out next year. I'm excited for, which we'll save for the best movies we're looking forward to in 2017 show. But uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> Um, I got one more category. Anybody else want to bring anything up before we get to the war movies category? That's the last one I got. All right. Um, honorable mentions on that one. Uh, 13 Hours, The Secret Soldiers of Benghazi. Um, I just rewatched that again. It's really good. It's a dang good movie. And it's made by Michael Bay, which kind of blows Bay. my brain off. Yeah. Yeah. So he used his powers for good on that one. And uh, mm-hmm. really good performances. And the fact that like his strengths really work when they're dialed down. You know, when it's like not falling through a building that's collapsing and you know when it's actually like normal action stuff then he does it really well uh well-developed characters so yeah i really liked that movie it came out way back in january and i still remembered it when i was thinking about movies this year so that's a good sign that if it stayed with me Hmm. you know all throughout the year um this was tough because the next two are easily two of the best movies of the year and i kind of like i felt like i had to pick one and so the one that got left out was uh, Eye in the Sky, which uh, hmm. I don't know if you all have heard of this one, but um, it's all about uh, <laughs> Brian hung his head in shame. I don't know why. Like It, it means you should know why, Cody. It means I own it, but I haven't seen it yet. <laughs> ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it means. Well, when you get around to putting it in, you're not going to be disappointed. It's uh, super Good. suspenseful. It's all about drone warfare. And so the thing that's so fascinating about it is this war movie could not have been made before now. Um, All the fighting happens like there's a little shack in Las Vegas where the pilot and his co-pilot are. And there's a girl at a computer in uh, Hawaii at Pearl Harbor checking facial recognition. And there's people in England who are running the op. And there's people in Kenya who are on the ground. And it's this really interesting mixture of all these questions. And then it all comes up to, I won't reveal what it is, but a big moral dilemma about whether or not you shoot the missile. And the last hour of the movie, this is not an exaggeration, I watched it standing up because I kept sitting down and getting back up and getting back Are up because it was serious? so tense. Yeah, it was so suspense. I was wow. at home by myself. So I wasn't I, in the theater or anything. I actually, That'd have been loaned awful, it. But. <laughs> I actually loaned it to a coworker and he loved it. So I, I'll definitely Alan Rickman, it. one of his last performances. We'll miss you, Alan Rickman. Hans Gruber himself. Um, he's really good in the film. Uh, it's great. It has uh, Aaron Paul, who uh, people know from uh, Mad... Not Mad Men. No, I'm sorry. I apologize. Breaking, Breaking Bad. Breaking Bad. Breaking <laughs> Bad. Uh, he's also an Idaho boy, which makes me like him. Yeah, Boise, so my is. hometown. Well, my uh, this is irrelevant, but my sister-in-law's brother went to school with him in high school. Oh. But... Um, he and he plays a character in uh, Eye in the Sky from Idaho. He even says it, and I was like, "Heck yeah, woo!" So okay, there nice. you go, a little transplanted pride for Idaho. So, fantastic movie, four out of four stars. Everybody should see it. 
But that leaves me to my number one movie in the war category and my number one movie of the year. Ooh. And that is Hack, that is Hacksaw Ridge. Yeah. So, I, again, we talked about that when we had the podcast, and it's the only movie that ever made me nauseous in the theater. <laughs> and yeah. uh, I got to see it again. And it impacted me more than any movie. It really left an impression on me. It was a sledgehammer in the face in the best way. There's nothing wrong with it that I can think of. Um, and it's, again, a movie that I think is going to stay with me for a long time. So, yeah, that's my favorite war movie. And all, also, right now, my favorite overall movie of 2016. So did I miss anything, or what are your all's thoughts? Uh, the only thing I wanted to add in the war category, which um, you haven't mentioned, but it's actually my worst movie of the year that I saw. And I actually paid money in the theater for this. And it's it's done pretty well, like review-wise, but uh, Whiskey Tango Foxtrot. Oh, I, yeah. I could not get into that movie. It just uh, fell so flat, and it's just so dry. And Tina Fey, I love Tina Fey, but she kind of has a dry sense of humor in it, everything just fell flat for me and i did not like it so i've heard that it's really good i know i lots of people that i talked to have said that it's really good and and maybe if i watched again i'd i'd well on the uh i was listening to the radio and the film reviewer whoever he is on npr he savaged it he tore it down in half like he hated it well you're not like that guy i like that guy (laughs) (laughs) So yeah, Bryce, uh, your thoughts? War movies this year? My favorite war movie is definitely uh, Hacksaw Ridge. It just blows my mind that it's even like a movie. Yeah, because it, it's it. Yeah, it's by far the good. It's one of the best uh, war movies that I've seen in a long time. I mean, it's up there easily with uh, Saving Private Ryan as one of the best war movies. Uh, I can't say enough, enough about it, and I almost, I love it so much. But then the like violence and the gore is also so much. Like you said, Cody, it's the only movie that I had to like, like look away and like take a breather. <laughs> and so I'm, I'm kind of like hesitant to, you know, be just send people off to go see this movie because, like. I don't want to be responsible when they, <laughs> you know, like freak out and like yeah. have, to have like s- like problems with their brains because of it. I mean, but it's so good, and I just think that you should see it, but you should also know what you're getting into as well because of of the fact that it's like it's the closest you're going to get to going to war without actually going to war. Yeah. I feel, yeah, I think. I mean. Mm-hmm. I, I don't want to get any closer than that. You know? <laughs> That's the thing that really stuck with me is usually war movies, like even Saving Private Ryan, like it's terrible and you're like, my gosh, that's awful. But you're not like, it didn't scare me. This is the first war well, movie yeah, that I was, was scared. Like, like I, I was. Yeah. I was frightened during it. Like the anti-war people, like if whoever you are, like if you're like anti-war and you go and like show stuff to like get people to like not join the military – Show them this. Yeah, <laughs> I think you you can. This could be a very good partner. Well, this and that's is the I wouldn't sign up. Yeah, cattle cattle farm equivalent for PETA. I agree with you, Bryce. This is if, you, <laughs> right? if you're anti-war, right. this is your propaganda yes. film right here. No kidding. But but as saying that, as saying that, it's not like it's anti-war at all. Mm-hmm. No, I it's think Mel Gibson likes it. I think he does. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just speculating. Yeah. But the way he dwells on it, it almost seems like, I don't know, what's the word? Fetishistic? But it's not really, though. It's not, I, that's the thing that makes him such a wonderful artist, though, is he confounds me. Yeah. I, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. You know, it, he's so unique and he's so confounding. And that's what makes the movie so powerful, is usually like, okay, take Schindler's List, for example. I know we're getting heavy here. But in Schindler's <laughs> List, I think as an audience member, at least I'm like, wow, these this is terrible, this is disturbing, this is awful. And yet, I'm relating to Oscar Schindler. I'm like, yeah, that's what I would do if I was there, which is probably not true. I uh, like, you know, like it, it's yeah. my out. You know, Oscar Schindler is my out. There's good in the world, whatever. And the thing about Hacksaw Ridge is, you have that. You have Andrew Andrew Garfield's character uh, Desmond Doss, 
who does the right thing and does amazing stuff with his faith in the face of all his horrors. But I wasn't relating to him. You know, I no, wasn't, I wasn't like, yeah, that's what I would do. I was like, no, dude, get down the ropes. You're going <laughs> to die, kidding. you know? The whole time, every single time, you're like, just go. Just <laughs> go. Yeah. Like, what are you doing? And that makes oh, it more really. powerful to me because you know, so because it's actually frightening, then his faith is amazing. It's, oh, no you know, kidding. you're like, I, I don't get it, but I admire it. So, and I, all I know reasons, we mentioned this. Yeah, I know we mentioned this before, but just like the Revenant and Hugh Glass, I mean, they had to tone down some of the stuff for this film because it <laughs> it, it wouldn't play out on film. You'd be like, this is fake, you know, it, it's not realistic, <laughs> and so it just makes it that more intriguing. The the backstory behind mm-hmm. this, the real life account, knowing that wow, that dude is he's the the real deal, you know? Yeah. Kudos he's, to him. He's hardcore. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yep. Well, but yeah. Okay. By far one of my my favorite movie. Of do you think that's? Well. Do you have a favorite movie yet, Bryce, or are you still mulling? From yeah, the that's year? what I, I I just said it. You're gonna piggyback on Hacksaw Ridge. <laughs> no, yeah. Hacksaw Ridge. It's just it's too good to like almost not to be. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, there's so much to it. It's so intense. I love war movies, and so it's just, yeah, definitely. definitely. Okay, well, before we ended up, I wanted to name a couple movies I didn't get a chance to see that I think are going to be awesome. And as soon as we do see them, we'll bring them to you here on the, the podcast. My number one movie that I really wanted to see and looks amazing is Silence. I think yes. Silence could be, again, another punch in the face from Andrew Garfield, and this time from Martin mm-hmm. Scorsese. Um it just looks like it has everything I look for in a movie, and it's from Martin Scorsese, and we live in a terrible place that doesn't show things until long after they come out. So that's the number one one that I think is going to be great. We'll probably be on this, you know, these best movies of the year list if we had seen it, and we'll bring it to you as soon as we do. Also, um, uh, the two Peter Berg, uh, Mark Wahlberg movies, both look really good, Deepwater Horizon and Patriot's Day. Have not seen those yet. Um, those yeah, also look like be great. Yeah. And then yeah. last, I really want to see La La Land, and yeah. that has not played here yet. So darn it! Yeah. This this freaking place. I mean, seriously, <laughs> the film desert of the USA. Right here. Anyway, uh, so I'm done. I'm done. We will be uh, bringing you more um, in the upcoming um, month and months as we get to award season. Some big movies are 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 out, have been released, and are also uh, coming out. And so, uh, make sure to look for um, the Valhalla Awards again, second year, the second <laughs> second go of the Valhalla Awards. Um, Make sure to check that out, and uh, war season is coming, so it's getting exciting. And this has been the Valhalla Filmcast. I am Bryce Thompson. I'm Brian Hammond. And I'm Cody Rarry. And we'll talk to you next time. The following viewers' opinions and commentary are the sole property of the Valhalla Filmcast. Any unauthorized reproduction without prior consent is prohibited. Any incidental music, audio clips, or film trailers are used for the sole purpose of film criticism and commentary as allowed under the Fair Use Act.